it's Carolina with Always Expect More. And today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a professional looking bag with simple to attach hardware. To make our bag, first we cut all our fabric pieces and interfacing pieces out. Attach your outside of your bag to some foam stabilizer. This will give some nice weight to your bag and help it stand up on its own. With a walking foot, stitch on the lines that you've marked. This will secure the fabric to the stabilizer and also it'll give your bag places to fold when it's all put together. Once you've made the outside of your bag, it's time to make the pockets. Pockets are simple to make. Fold your piece in half, mark your curves, and then stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure to give yourself a nice hole for turning. Before you turn, always clip your seam allowances. This is important because seam allowances are where bulk happens. By clipping off these corners, you won't have extra fabric hanging out in these corners and you'll get nice, sharp corners. Once you've clipped your corners, you also wanna clip your curves. Just clip close, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. If you're someone who loves to measure, you can absolutely measure, but I usually like to eyeball things. Cut all the way around and then turn right side out. If you turn one side and then the other, it's easy to get your hand in there. And you can use a point turner to help get those sharp points out. As tempting as it is, you never want to use the point of your scissors to get these corners poked out because you can easily stab right through that corner and you'd have to start all over again. Use the point turner to get all the way around your curves and then repeat with the other side. You'll have something like this and you can just press everything down, making sure to press in your seam allowances. We're going to stitch this close and edge stitch our top all at the same time. This is going to give it a finished look and close up this hole. To edge stitch, I've moved my needle all the way over to the left and I'm using the inside of my presser foot as the guide. Put your presser foot down, take a few stitches forward, and then a couple stitches backward just to secure your thread in place. Then stitch all the way around following that guide. Corners can be a little bit tricky. Just lift up your presser foot, take a couple stitches, lift it up again, pick it up again. If your edge stitch isn't exactly perfect, just remember this is probably the last time anyone's going to look at this this closely. It doesn't have to be perfect to look professional. I'm using a red thread here to help you see it, but obviously you're going to pick a thread that matches your fabric and that'll help disguise any imperfections as well. Stitch all the way around, making sure to tuck in those seam allowances. One more curve. Make sure that you put the presser foot all the way down before you keep stitching. And when you get back to the end, just a couple stitches back and forth to secure everything in place. Once you have completely edge stitched, you're ready to attach your hardware. This is what really will make the bag shine. Fold your flap in half to find your middle, and then mark with your water-soluble pen the holes. There are templates online that allow you to do this, but I find it's easy to just use the hardware. Then stitch all the way around, giving yourself a little room, but not too much room. This hardware is going to last the lifetime of the bag and we want to make sure it's snug. Stitch all the way around and then clip your hole so that you have something that looks like this. 
Now we're ready to attach the hardware. This is the front of my bag, and this is the front of my hardware. So I want to make sure that I put the front on the front. The back of my hardware is super simple to attach. It's just a couple screws. Just screw those screws in place. I do the first screw about halfway in, not too tight. And then I've made my hole a little snug on purpose. So I stretch the fabric just a little bit to find that second hole and then screw the second screw in place. Now I can screw the screws in all the way down. Twist it a little bit, make sure it's straight, and you have professional attached hardware. If you have fabric sticking through, you can unscrew your screws, pull that fabric out a little bit, and then screw your screws tightly back in place. That's the top half. The bottom half is even easier to attach. When making your bottom pocket, you've left a hole on the bottom so that none of your hardware shows on the back. Line up your top and bottom. Decide where you want your hardware to go. We'll be overlapping about two and a half inches for this pattern. Mark, then grab your top. You can use your marking pen to mark your two points. I like to press down. Usually the interfacing is enough room and I can see those marks. With a pair of small sharp scissors, put your hand inside, don't poke your hand, and cut two little slits just big enough for those prongs to go through. The prongs go through to the back, but not all the way to the back. And then fold those prongs over. You can use pliers, but I like to think I'm really strong and can do it on my own. Adjust it in place. And your professional looking hardware is complete. Pin everything in place, edge, di edge stitch your bottom down and your top across, and you've got one side of your bag done. On the second side of the bag, we're doing two pockets. These pockets are nice and deep, so there's lots of room for cell phones or cords or whatever sewing supplies you're taking on the go. These pockets are just as simple to make. We just added a dart, both in the top of the pocket and in the bottom of the pocket to give that extra room. Turn them right side out, edge stitch across the top of the bottom pocket, and the flap, the bottom of the flap. Attaching hardware here is just as easy as it was before. We have these fun clasps. Unscrew the little screws on the top Fold your pocket in half, make a nice crease. I love this hardware. It has a little mark that shows me exactly where my center is. Turn it over and just screw those screws tightly in place. The screws are so tiny and so hidden. It looks like you had a professional machine put the hardware on. No one will believe you made this bag yourself. Screw it nice and tight. You want this hardware to last as long as the bag does. And you've attached the top. The bottom is simple to attach. Mark where your four spots are. You can either do this with your marking pen or by pressing down. Cut your slits. I've done that here already. And going through that side hole that's going to get closed up when we top stitch everything down. Just put your hardware through and either with pliers or with your hands, press all those flaps to the side. You can press the flaps either outward or inward, it's up to you. I like to press them outward. I feel like that's more secure, but it will put more wear on the bag in that spot. Your Outside flap is complete. Just pin it down 
an edge stitch in place. When you edge stitch these in place, you'll be closing that side hole and that top hole all at the same time. Second side of our bag is done. Now come the straps. Our straps are three and a half inch wide pieces of fabric that we fuse some interfacing to to give them a little extra security. We want our straps to hold up. Stitch all the way down one side and then across the top. I have a nifty turning tool. I used to use a bodkin or a safety pin to turn my straps and that would work, but sometimes it takes a little extra time, a little extra effort. It gets frustrating to try to move that bodkin or that safety pin, especially at the beginning around the top edge. This turning tool is so much faster. The first time I used it, I gasped out loud. Just put the point in, push, and an entire width of fabric strap is done just like that. Pull your wooden rod out. Clip off the end, we won't need it. And press your strap. When I press my straps, I like to have the seam allowance along the center of the back and make sure that all the bulk is to one side. Then stitch both sides for a finished look. We'll cut off a few pieces that we'll use to attach our D-rings to our bag as we put the bag together. That's right, our bag is almost done. The inside of the bag is also very simple to make. A super simple zipper pocket, a nice strap place to hold your keys, and a drop-in pocket. I love to use light fabrics for the linings of my bags. Light fabrics make it super easy to find everything that I've put in there. Also, I use a fabric with a little bit of a pattern, so if I get pen marks or smudges, they're really not that noticeable. You can add some magnetic closures to the top and bottom. Turn it right side out. You've stitched your front and back together. Tuck everything inside. and pin across the top. Make sure your strap is tucked in as you pin. Our right sides are together. Our right sides are together. You pin your seam allowances here and here to make sure everything's centered. Measure for your handles and pin those in place. Everything should be tucked inside as you stitch all the way across. There's a hole in the center to pull everything right out. Edge stitch all the way across of your bag and your bag's done. You're ready to take it on the go. It's that easy to make a professional looking bag with great hardware that you can take on your trips with you.